I had Deacon to read the sixth, seventh, and eighth, but I'm going to read the second, the third, first. There are 11 days journey from Herbert by the way of Mount Saria unto Kadesh Barnea. And it came to pass in the 40th year, in the 11th month, on the first day of the month, that Moses spoke unto the children of Israel according to all that the Lord had given him in commandment unto them. And I'm going to go down where he said, And the Lord our God spoke unto us in Herbert, saying, You have dwelt long enough in this mountain. Turn you and take your journey. And then down to the eighth verse, Behold, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess it. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go in. Go in. Go in. Take it. Take it. Take what God has given you. My God. My God. We're not going to be before you long. It's good to be home. Good to see everybody. Praise God. I wasn't on vacation. I was busy. Natural work and spiritual work. Praise God. We're going to talk today, and, and, and I, I need your ears. I need your ears because we're going to deal with our text today. And he told them that you went around this mountain. You journeyed around it long enough. And, 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 and they were at Kadesh, Bernaya. My thought today is, what's up at Kaddish? What's up at Kaddish? Something was going on at Kaddish. God had brought the children of Israel to this point. And it was in the wilderness of Kaddish, Bernaya. And I want to deal with appointed time, appointed place, appointed purpose, and appointed plan. God had brought them within 11 days, which they say is 160 miles within the promise. The appointed time was 40 years. You've been here long enough, it's time to move. The appointed place was Kaddish. The appointed purpose and plan was to take the land. Every move God makes has to do with time, place, and purpose and plan. Do we understand that? Every move, everything that God does, he operates in time and he operates in in, in appointed time and, and he operates in purpose and plan. And when we speak of time, when we speak of time, we, 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 we want to talk about God's time. For, for, for the time in the Greek word mean kairos. And, and, and also koronos time. Kairos time meaning due time, favorable opportunity, and suitable purpose. I want y'all to follow me today because we're talking about time. And I I probably won't get no higher than this because I feel like this is a word that I need to give. Kronos time means duration, length of time, which is quantity time. Kairos means quality time. And that's how well you live out your quality time. Huh? Kairos is how well you live in your chronos. How well are you living today? And in Hebrew, time says zeman, which is appointed time. Elijah didn't appear on scene until the 17th chapter of 1 Kings. And you would think that he, he, he was just, uh, no, we don't know where he was. All of a sudden, yes, here he is. Nobody had heard of Elijah the Tishbite. They, had, they didn't know anything about him. But he appears in the 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. 
And, 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 and why? How did this happen? Because it was his appointed time. There was a situation that needed to be worked out with Ahab and with Jezebel and Elijah was the man for the job. It was his appointed time to step up to the plate. And he stepped up, and he stepped up big and bad. He said, three and a half years, there will be famine in this land. God's appointed time. God works in his appointed time. See, we try to rush God. And, and, and because we want him to be on our schedule. But there is appointed time for every one of us in this building. God's going to move at his appointed time. With, 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 with the time God has given us, how well are we living our Kairos time? Our quality time? I'm asking you today, how well are you living? Huh? Are you living the life that God gave you to live? Are you living in the place he wants you to be? Are you living the plan that he has for you? Are you living the purpose that he has for you? In your, in your, in your Kairos time. What about your quantity time? That's how long you live. Let's talk about the quantity of life. How, how long God gives you on this earth. What are you doing with it? How are you living? Are you living outside the will of God? How are you living? Are you waiting to hear a word from God? How are you living? Are you moving at your own will? How are you living? How well are you living? John, third chapter, third book of John says, I wish above all things that you will prosper and be in health even as your soul, even as your soul, even as your soul prospers. Even as your soul, don't try to prosper without prospering your soul. That's the number one thing. He said, I wish, I wish, I wish you well. But I wish you well as your soul gets well. I wish you well as your spiritual life gets well. I wish you well. And then I want you to prosper in all things. How many of you know that you're prosper? You'll do well when God is in the plan. I, I went there. I went there because I'm coming here wanted to talk about time I need you to understand that we're not on, on our time we think we're on our time but we're not on our time it's all about us isn't it my time it's not about your time it's about God's time and he has a set appointment for your life in his time well let's go to Kaddish it was situated right on the boundaries of Canaan land, which was the gateway into the promised land. The plan and purpose for Israel was for them to go in and take the land. Kaddish, and I want you to get this, was a place of testing for them, preparation for them, decision making, and change at Kaddish. Huh? And we all have our Kaddish. You're not ready unless you come to your Kaddish. You, you're not prepared to make decisions until you come to Kaddish. Kaddish is always, and this, this, this is the thing that's a blessing, because it's always right around the corner from your blessing. Huh? Kaddish is, is always right around the corner. That time of preparation and that time of decision and that time of testing is always right around the corner. See, what happens, we give up before we get to the corner. We give up before we get to the corner. Not really that the blessing is right around the corner. God always leads us up to the blessing. He always leads us up to the deliverance right at the point. And in that point comes a testing time. He wants to know, where are you? He wants to know, are you living well? He wants to know, are you ready to take it? Because the thing here is they were supposed to take it. He put it right in their hand and he said, take it. God's telling you this morning, here it is, take it. But, but, but let me tell you something. 
in your taking it. <laughs> it's going to be a test. It's right there. It's looking at you. That blessing God has for you. That deliverance God has for you. That way out God has for you. He's right there and he's looking you in the face. But you got to take it. And when you're taking something, there's going to be a war. There's a battle when you get ready to take it now. Don't think it's just going to be laid in your lap. There's a war you got to fight to take it. See, they had to go in and take it, but they had to fight. And they weren't prepared for all of that. We're sitting around wondering, Lord, what can I do here in this situation? He said, there it is. Just fight. Fight for it. Fight for it. And I always say, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Fight for it. Oh, God. And if you don't stay focused... You won't discern the times. We miss God because we don't discern his times. You got to stay focused. Jesus had a Kaddish in the wilderness. Yeah, yeah, that was a time of preparation for him. That was decision-making time for him and change in the wilderness. Forty days. He had his appointed time after baptism. His appointed place was the wilderness. And his appointed purpose was to redeem us. Ha ha. He kept his appointed time. He kept it just like God gave it to him. Paul had a Kaddish. That bad Paul. That mean Paul. Hauling Christians off and having them killed. He had a Kaddish. On the road of Damascus, God knocked him off that beast. And he had a Kaddish there. He had to make a decision. He had to say in his heart, am I going to do it? Because that Kaddish, the thing is about that Kaddish, you're going to either do it or you're not going to do it. You're going to trust God or you won't trust him. You're going to say yes or you won't say yes. What is it going to be for you? What is it going to be for you in your condition? <laughs> here, here at Kaddish, if you read it, everybody lost their mind. Everybody lost their mind at Kaddish. Let me tell you what happened at Kaddish. They right at the promised land now, don't y'all forget it. They done come through the wilderness after wilderness. God done fed them, put food in their mouth, put shoes on their feet, brought them across the Red Sea. Oh, he just been found and taken care of. Here they are at the blessing. And they lost their mind. If you're not careful, when you get to the point of your blessing, you'll lose your mind. You go crazy because you're trying to make a decision and you're trying to get ready because your mind is not there and you're at Kaddish now. I need a way out here, God. What do we do? What do we do? You'll lose your mind. Let me tell you. Oh, God. At Kaddish, Mary and Aaron spoke against Moses. Lost their mind because of his Ethiopian wife. And then she was struck with leprosy. This was at Kaddish. Right at the blessing, okay? Moses sent 12 spies to, to spy out the land and come back over with a report. And, and, and they came back with the report, but that word, but, but. They say, yes, the land is flowing with milk and honey. And, and, and yes, it's a beautiful land. And everything that you said, Moses, it's good over there, but. See, that's why I say you got to make a decision that condition can't be no buts. You got to get the butt out of the way. And I'm just talking about the B-U-T, not the B-U-T-T. Get your butt out of the way. Because it's that butt, it's that butt that stops you from getting your blessing. Because the butt means you're making an excuse. You're making an excuse. Get your butts out of the way. And they said to themselves, oh, we can't take it. Uh, we're like grasshoppers. 
in their eyes and they, they brought back a bad report. And, 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 and in this bad, it was, t- it was only 10 of them that brought back the bad report. There was two. Okay, we at Kaddish. Israel rebels at Kaddish. The 10 had the grasshopper spirit. <laughs> 10 of them had the grasshopper spirit. You say, what kind of spirit is that? Well, I was told grasshoppers only chew, hop, and spit. All grasshoppers do is chew, hop from one branch to the other, and spit. That's a grasshopper spirit. And I'm finding that sometimes we got the grasshopper spirit. We're hopping from one situation to another, not getting the victory over any of them. See, it is, is it possible, can I ask you a question? Is it possible that we are chewing on the word, talking about the grasshopper spirit, but not swallowing? Because, see, they chew and spit. Are we spitting it out once we get the flavor out of it? You know how you chew gum? Get the flavor out of it? And you throw it away? Are we chewing the word, not swallowing it? Is that the reason we don't have victories? That's why we're not walking in authority? Is that why we're not decreeing, declaring, and declaring a thing? Because we are just chewing on it and not swallowing it. We get excited about the word. Our emotions get high and we rejoice. And God, the word was good today. And, and I feel like I got the victory right now. Because God, you talked about how God delivered the Hebrew boys out of the forest furnace. And, and it was four of them in there and still a three. Whoop, I'm feeling good about now. You know, I'm getting that. You're giving me information. And, 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 and yet I got to get some revelation. Because I'm getting all the information. How God delivered him and how he delivered Daniel out of the lounge. Isn't, it irons, isn't that wonderful? Oh, that's such a blessing. And how he healed the man after 38 years. And how he healed the woman with the issue of blood. And how he told the woman that was bent over for 18 years, get up, straighten up. We get happy because we're in our emotions then. But when we go out and run into Kaddish, what do we do when we run into Kaddish? We get our shout on and we feel real good. We feel like we can tell. But here is the thing. There is no benefit in chewing and spitting. The benefit comes in digesting. You got to digest that word. David said, the words have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. That word, I hide it down in there. So when the enemy come, I pull it up. When trouble come, I pull it up because I have digested the word. I've taken it all in. That word, that word, that word, I hid it. I hid it for such a time as when I didn't know this problem was coming. And when it came, the word came up because I digested it. Yeah, what else happened at Kaddish? Marion dies at Kaddish right at the promise, didn't get to go. Aaron dies at Kaddish. Moses dies at Kaddish. Because he did what? He hit the rock. And the God didn't tell him to hit it. He said, smoke the rock, touch it. And he hit it not only once, but twice. And well, then he couldn't, he couldn't go either. Listen, when we rebel and refuse to swallow the word of God, We can't get deliverance. There's no deliverance in that. Deliverance comes when you digest that word. And when you know that God can do what he said he'll do, and you'll stand on it to your death, that's digesting. We can forfeit God's blessings. Well, well, and I'm almost done. What was the problem? What was the problem at Kaddish? The people were not mentally ready. They weren't ready for God's appointed time. They weren't ready for his appointed plan or purpose. Are you ready today for God's appointed time? 
for his appointed plan, his purpose for your life. Are you ready for it today? They weren't ready because of what? Fear and unbelief. How many of you know that unbelief is a sin? Huh? Am, am I telling you something new or did you know that already? Well then why do we live in it? Why do we live in unbelief? Huh? Why do we walk in fear? When he says in his word, I have not given you the spirit. That, 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 that's going to be some things that cause fear. But he didn't give us the spirit of fear. Kaddish is that defining moment in our lives when we need to discern the place and the purpose that God has for our life. As we sit here today, how are you living? Are, are, are you living Kairos time? Are you living a happy life? Are you living a peaceful life? Are you living a delivered life? Have you, have you tapped in into the promises of God? Have you tapped into it? Let me tell you, we have compassed this mountain long enough. We've been around this mountain too long. Living in the past, can't forgive. Struggling in relationships, been around there too long. Been around there too long. Being angry and mad. Getting mad when people say to them that you say you're a Christian. Uh, we've been around that mountain too long. I know what you're saying. Oh, it's a process. It's a process. The process ends somewhere. You ain't always living in a process. Every time you turn around, oh, it's a process. And God's working on me. And I haven't, I, I, I'm not the best, but God's working on me. We get happy. We get happy when we talk about the process. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because we're lazy and we want to stay in the process. You coming out of that process. Come out of the process. Get where God has done it for you. Get where God is doing it for you. Get where you know God is a way maker. Come out of the process. Oh my God. And living in the process. That's an excuse. That's one of them buts. And we want it our way. God's not Burger King. You can't have it your way. It's God's appointed time. It's appointed purpose. And his appointed plan for your life. You cannot have it your way. Huh? God didn't create us to have stuff our way. He said, I create you that you will be praised to me. That you will worship me. You will live for me. <laughs> can't do it your way. It's time to start decreeing, declaring. Job 22 and 28 says, you shall declare a thing. And it shall be established. It didn't say might. Your family's going haywire. Your relationships are going haywire. Everything around you look like it's caving in. But he said, declare a thing. Take authority over that foolishness. Stop crying over spilled milk. That's, 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 that's when we're still in the process because when we're crying over spilled milk. Something happened years ago. We're still crying. Somebody mentioned it we still cry. Oh, yes. That sure did hurt me. Well, when so did it happen? Oh, it was about 30 years ago. Oh. You've been around that mountain long enough. Get up from there. Go in and take it. Declare and decree the promises of God. Here, here, here. We need to stop crying over spilled milk. Guess what? The word is our paper towel. Take that word and pick it up and wipe up the mess. Huh? Huh? Take that word and wipe up the mess. That's our paper towel. You know how you grab your paper towel and you every time you spill something, you write, get the word. Every time the devil brings something, wipe it up. Some of us like to reuse paper towels. 
you know, some of us are so tight and stingy. We, 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 we said, well, we don't want to waste nothing. So, boy, don't you throw that paper towel in the trash. You put it over there and we can use it again. But every time you look at that paper towel, you see the mess. Because the mess is on the paper towel. That's why you need to wipe it up and put it in the trash. Put it in the trash. Paul said, I press toward the mark of the price of the high calling in Christ Jesus. I'm not looking back. I'm looking forward. I'm pressing ahead. God is my help. He is my hope. Thank you, Jesus. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're not looking back. We're pressing forward. We're